In my last video, I basically promised you that I wouldn't make this one, but here we are. Welcome to my channel, I'm Oistan, and I'm desperately trying to become a bookworm at the moment. A little background, it's now the 23rd of June, and so far this month I've read two books. This is by far the least amount of books I've read in a month since I started this whole thing, and I'm beginning to get a little worried, or desperate, you might say. And the reason why I didn't want to make this video is that it happens to everyone. Everyone experienced that they don't want to read that many books. And of course it varies, but everyone has that moment where they're not feeling up to reading a book or they read a bad book and they feel like this isn't worth it. So everyone knows about it, but at the same time, when it's about you, it's about you. And that feels horrible. This video will be a little self-centered, but I'm sure that I can give you some tips on the way. But first, I do think there's one thing that people underestimate. So even though I'm well on my way to read a hundred books this year, if I start reading again, I always feel like I could just quit reading and yeah, quit entirely, just stop reading books and never do it again. And I do feel that YouTube is still holding me accountable to get my reading on. Especially when I talk about have I become a bookworm, people say, of course you have, like you read a ton of books, but I'm the kind of person that can do that and then stop completely. It brings me so much joy reading books and so much frustration at times, but it's always worth it because the reading experiences that you really love will stick with you for the rest of your life and it's meaningful. And also reading nonfiction, I find really enjoyable, learning about new things, it's just a great thing. But all this considered, I could still go and watch a movie or watch TV. I love movies, so there are stories in them, obviously. All this to say, each time I'm experiencing the slightest bit of reading rut, I'm afraid that it will be the end of things. Or the end of my reading life. And I don't think that for people that have read their whole lives, this is the same thing because they will always have their books. Books is sort of a part of their personality. I do not feel the same way. I just feel like I read a lot and I do enjoy it as I said, but it feels different. If you have thoughts on this, please leave them in the comment section. But it's sort of like it's more integrated in your person. In a good way, of course. This whole situation is kind of something that I've predicted for the last six months. Before Christmas, I knew that that year I had a reading goal of 53 physical books in a year, and then I listened to a whole lot of audiobooks, but the physical books was something that tied me to physical reading, sitting down with a book. And at this moment, I feel like that was a wise decision. I talked a lot about it, that I felt like that was important to me to have that physical one. And three months ago, I started slowly but surely turning into an audiobook machine. I nearly only listened to audiobooks because it was easier. I could do something else at the same time. And this is kind of key because the last three months has been chaos when it comes to time management. I have really not had the time to sit down and enjoy books a lot. So having audiobooks when I'm traveling has been great and necessary, but it also makes me enjoy my reads less. This is another discussion, of course, but I've talked about it sometimes that reading a physical book, sitting down and taking the time will always be more worth it to me than listening to an audiobook because you have distractions with the audiobook that you don't have with the physical book, if you pay attention at least. Then there's just the sheer volume. At times I've been 10 books ahead of my reading schedule for this year and reading 100 books in a year sounds like a crazy thing to me, but still I've been 10 books ahead. And now I think I'm one book ahead, so time is slowly running out. We'll get back to that one. So how am I going to escape this rut? It started out some weeks ago when I bought a bunch of paperbacks, but when they finally arrived, the air was out of the balloon. Is that if that's an expression in English as well. I was kinda, let's just say I felt a bit indifferent when they actually arrived. This might change, but the books I bought were short, they were supposed to be funny, some of them, and some of them were impulse buys. 
So I just saw the cover and then thought this will be something I would enjoy. So getting a bit of mystery and excitement into the whole thing, I think that will help. And in general, when I feel like this, shorter books that just doesn't take up that much time seems to be really helpful. Also the feeling of finishing a book in a short period of time feels great. It's something about escalating your reading in a sense feeling accomplishment. Then I've also tried to just re-routine it, so planning to sit down and read a book, creating a bit distance to my audiobooks and actually just sitting down with the book and that's the only thing I'm going to do. So this is kind of the process of forcing it a bit, but I do think that this will be helpful. I find that to be a good tip in general, just setting aside time to do the things you want to do. An obvious thing, but it's never really that simple. I've also thought about rereading books, but to me, I do feel that that will be more like stagnating than progressing. Like, I've already read the book, I don't need to read it again. I know at some point I actually will try to reread a book, but that will probably happen when I'm feeling better than this. And my best tip I've probably saved for last if you decide on doing a reread, you'll probably choose a book from an author that you really like. At least that's what I would do. And this is also a good tip. Reading a book from an author you know you have a good history with, that you usually like, either it's the writing or the storytelling, just a, an author you might feel comfortable with. And this leads me over to my favorite tip of all of these, and that is to go to a bookstore and pick up a book that you feel in the mood for. So this I did recently, I will talk about that in my next video, and I feel like it's kind of going better now, but it's still a bit of a struggle. But at least just going into a bookstore, browsing books in general, and then just reading on the back of them and thinking about if this is something that you feel like you would enjoy in that moment. And that's the important thing. It's not something you generally could enjoy, but something you feel like this is what I want to read now. And this I've talked about a little bit before that it's easier going to the bookstore and choosing the right book rather than going to your bookshelf because the bookshelf might guilt trip you a bit. It might lead you into books that you feel like you have to read rather than that you want to. At least that's the thing for me. Now we'll just have to wait and see how this whole thing goes. If you have recommendations for easily read short books, it might be fiction or non-fiction. I do like memoirs, so if you have memoirs under 200 pages, that's the limit, please leave them in the comment section. I never really say this, but if you like this video, please give it a like. I'll see if this makes a difference. I really don't know, but it's fun to look at likes. Really not, but I do want to promote my videos, so do leave a like if you feel like it. And thank you for watching this video. If you're in a reading rut, I'm hoping that you and me both are getting out of it soon, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!